tomorrow we have a big a big 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 day not only for the markets but also for u.s economy all right we have inflation reports coming in tomorrow we have the cpi we have the ppi not only for the u.s but for the rest of the big countries around the world so this will affect the markets one way or another you know in other words your investment so let's go over exactly what i do see happening tomorrow and how the market will react to this also investments if you're a stockholder now if you look back at the last CPI we got, you know, it was for the month of July. So tomorrow we're going to get the CPI report, the consumer price index, which gives us a status around how prices are been moving higher, lower or remaining flat since July all the way up to August. Remember, these reports are always one month lagging, one month behind. Now, the main components of these reports are, of course, oil, rent, you know, shelter, food and other items. Now, if I look at the price of oil, which is the most, you know, I will say uh, a big contributor, you can see that we had, you know, a downfall since the month of July. And even since, you know, this whole thing, I mean, the, 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 the commodity prices and the energy prices hit the highest price, I mean, the highest level since the beginning of this year. So let's go to July 1st. This is July 1st, all right? This is the USO, United States Oil ETF. So it gives you a pretty good correlation of where the prices of oil are trading in the market. So July 1st, we were around 82 and August 31 or 31st, we were around, you know, 11% lower than that. So we have a decrease in the price of oil the entire month of August. Now, if I go all the way back to when we hit the peak, you know, that was around June, we are already seeing a 21% decrease in the price of oil. And I'm looking at the gas prices at the pump as well. The United States average, I think, is right now around 370. So this is another big decrease when at some point, just one or two months ago, we were still sitting at five, even six at an average. So that will play a big, you know, a big, a big way into the CPI we're going to uh, get tomorrow. Now, if you add to that, you know, house prices, rent levels that are also decreasing a little bit, I think we are in for um, a pretty significant, uh, 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 um, interesting, positive report, because this is something that not only the Fed is looking at, but a pretty much everything as far as investing in the stock market goes. So pretty much every investor. Now, because in the U.S., the Federal Reserve or the central bank is very aggressive, things are a little bit different in other countries of the world, other part of the world, especially in Europe. They are doing now a second, or they did a second interest rate hike just last week, and they announced today that they will not go, even if they have another one, it wouldn't be as big as people may expect because they are really conservative. Here in the U.S., we already have multiple interest rate hikes, and now people are expecting another big interest rate hike coming up later in September when the Fed meets. Now, I think the market is also kind of expecting the fact that these guys are also looking at these numbers I just shared with you, and they will look at this and maybe feel like, you know what, we don't have to be as aggressive. We don't have to be as hawkish, as they say, you know, to use the fancy word to say aggressive, in fighting inflation because inflation is now naturally pulling back. So, Remember, there's always, uh, 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 um, there's always a case to overdo this correction when it comes to interest rate hiking, interest rate increasing, just because you can break totally the economy. It may come from the real estate market. It may come from, you know, the business world. It may come from the corporate world with, you know, layoffs. But they have to be, and I think they are kind of cognitive of that as well. So that's what I think. Bottom line is, Numbers are looking positive, numbers are looking good. If we come in, if the numbers come in and they are flat, I think that will still be a positive, meaning that you know we are still kind of trending back down. But if we are you know, on the 0.3% difference or 0.5 or even higher than that, then definitely it will be a big win. And I think the market can cheer that up and stocks can go, stock can, can, can go up. Now, if it doesn't, we might have a little bit of a sell-off, but I think things are already priced in as far as, you know, inflation expectations. Because when you look at real-time data, not of these, you know, one-month lagging indicators, real-time data, and I share with you many, many times here, inflation is really, really looking like 
you know, we already have picked. So it's a good thing for markets. And based on this, I think there are a few sectors that you can position yourself now in order to make a little bit of money or quite some, you know, decent amount of money in the next short term, three, six, maybe 12 months. But we're going to dive into that in a separate video. So make sure you don't miss that.